Hello everybody and welcome back to Cast and Blast. Today we are going all the way out to Nia Bay by water 118 miles to fish for some deep water lingcod and halibut. So we've been traveling for a couple hours now and we're getting somewhat close. We just passed Port Angeles and we're in the Strait of Juan de Fuca. If you actually look that direction, Canada is just a few miles away. It's hard to see on GoPro, but there's some skyscrapers over there. That is actually Victoria. So we're all moored up now. We've actually been tying lines and getting rods and reels ready for a couple hours. We got two other people coming with us tomorrow and we just gotta make sure we're ready. It's actually getting pretty late. It's about 8.30, almost nine and the sun is setting. There's also a big sunken boat literally right across from our slip. So there's our boat and here's a massive pole sticking out of the water from a sunken boat that's in here. That's probably something similar to that. It's probably a commercial trawler or long liner or something, but it's a big boat and it's been in here for a while. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but on the pole, there's a bunch of barnacles. So we've reached Blue Dot, now we're gonna get our kicker down to control our drift and start fishing. So if you guys may notice, we are fishing with electric reels. The electric reels we're using are Tatcom 750s, and what's really nice about them, other than they're electric, is they are geared lower than a conventional reel. That means they are a lot stronger and they can reel in a bigger fish than what you would think a reel that size could typically do. A really big drawback from that though is they reel in line a lot slower because they're lower geared. And before somebody gets mad at me for fishing with electric reels calling them quote unsportsmanlike, just remember we're fishing in 400 to 700 feet of water for close to 12 hours a day for the next four days. The jigs that we're using weigh about 3.3 pounds with water pressure at that deep. It's closer to six or seven. And if you want to jig that amount of weight thousands of times for four days and then reel up all your line for each drift, go ahead and knock yourself out. But that's just not what we prefer to do and we'd rather conserve our back for the next day. So we use electric reels. Well, he was barely moving his. He got hit. Let's see what we got here. We need more coolers. More coolers. <laughs> That's more one thing coolers. we don't need. <laughs> he said I'm, he's going to bring me more coolers. I'm like, I hope so. <laughs> didn't bring him down the dock. So what you guys are seeing is not a realistic time that it took us to bring in each fish. It actually took us 5 to 10 minutes and I just edited it down so you guys can see as many fish as possible. And my video isn't 5 hours long. Start cranking. Oh, 
Oh, see color. Uh, ooh, link cod. Uh, So what we're mostly using to catch these fish is a 54 ounce Norwegian jig. These jigs are super good at fluttering and creating a lot of commotion at the ocean floor because the fish at that level can't really see and they're mostly feeding off of motion. As you can see, this fish was caught on a straight pipe jig that we made in a different video that's right here if you guys are interested in checking it out. I might have to step down and wait size for the next drop. I don't think we need the hugest one yet. Well, blue dot wasn't any good. We only got a few small lingcods, so now we ran out to 72 square. A couple more miles offshore, and we're gonna try it here. Halibut fishing should be really good, especially offshore. So when we send them down, we should pretty much immediately get fish, and if not, we're gonna try to reset, and if we still don't get a fish, we're gonna move again. This one's bigger. Guess he just got the magic touch. Oh, and he's hump thumping it too. Hump thumping yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> we just double hump thumped it. I like this better. This felt like the biggest one I've hooked so far. Yeah, it's bigger. I just don't feel like jigging for that long is the deal. <laughs> My shoulder hurts. The wind is blowing me a little bit cocky. I'll try to straighten oh, you guys. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, you're fish. leadered over there. that back or keep oh, yeah buddy well, perfectly sure the canary has the three stripes on it like that I believe double check Halibut, small though. That fish wasn't actually a halibut, but it's in the flounder family. It's called an arrow tooth. Hold, hold. Better. A little better. Can 
might want to pull that one in. Don't don't give him slack, Ben. It's getting slack. Grab the line and just lift the fish up. He ain't coming off that. You don't got to go. Okay. We want eight. We should take that one. Yeah, it's a good fish. I think so. It's, it's a good, it's good enough to get a little bit more. Okay, bud. <laughs> okay. <laughs> From 160 meters to uh, that bottom. Straight away. Straight away. This one's got some head shakes. Oh yeah, Picasso. Picasso. Oh. So let's lift him in or grab the lure. Just hook well. That's a Picasso. That is a Picasso. Um, the Picasso I kept oh, in San Diego. Oh, shit. Just hit him down. <laughs> <laughs> Blinking. I can't tell. You gotta look at me. Yeah, like a blinking. Again. You might want to slide those coolers out of the way, slide them that way, both of them. We actually kicked back a lot of halibut that day. Unfortunately, I had a malfunction with my hard drive, so my GoPro didn't save a lot of the footage that I had. 
but a lot of the halibut we kicked back were in between 10 and 20 pounds. The two guys that were with us were only there for two days, so they took the larger halibut that they caught that day, which were only 25 pounds, but they were pretty much the biggest ones of the day. We were all still very happy with the fish that we got. Even though we didn't get any monster halibut or monster lingcod, it's still 100% better than being skunked. So we're headed back now. It's about 2 and we gotta go back to the marina and get ice. And the ice place closes around 4 or 5, so we only have 2 or 3 hours to get back. Then we're gonna clean our fish. But it's gonna be a little smoother going back because we're going with the tip, with the wind and tide. So we got back and we were trying to dock and get ice from the same place that the commercial boats get ice from, which surprisingly they let you do. They do charge you a little more than the commercial boats, but you're still getting a good deal and it's salted flake ice. So it's actually frozen salt water, which is much colder than normal ice is. But we actually got offered ice from this commercial boat that was trying to load up. Guys, just get a of ice. Yeah. Huh? Uh, that, that, this guy's offering to give us a bunch of ice. He's about to throw all of his ice. Hang on a second. We need ice. Whatever. What do you got for ice? Oh no. I mean. Oh, we would love it if you threw it in our boat. Yeah, we would take it. Can we come on alongside you over here? Okay. Thank you very much. You get ice, we're getting fish. Uh, no, we're just getting ice. We're, we're gonna get. Oh, oh, I think that they they have some ice. Yeah, they have some ice. Not on a boat like this. I mean, I work for him all summer, but. Huh? Check it out. For real, come look. Got bunks? Yeah, they're downstairs. This is my where I sleep. Wow. That's the bathroom and shower. Bunks are down there. Well, this is our earth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Home away from home. It has everything. Oh. TV, watch movies on the end of the day, right?
That's pretty awesome. So now we're all fueled up and back at port, but we still got a bunch of fish to flay. So I think that's my job and I'm going to get to it. So when I said we got a bunch of fish to flay, what I really meant is we only have four. So I'm going to get this done relatively quickly. Okay, and now before I take this flake completely off, I'm gonna flip the fish over and fillet the other side because it's a lot easier when you have a steady, when you still have the flay on the other side so it keeps the fish level. So I won't show the filleting of all the fish because it's the same exact method and way for all of them. I'm just taking the fillets off and cutting around their guts, and it would just be super repetitive. All right, well, it's getting towards the end of the day. I'm going to go shower and go to bed because I am completely wiped, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.